Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Tech Shack. And as we always do, bringing you a variety of stories from Pakistan, young, old, brilliant, not so brilliant sometimes. But in this case, I'd like to introduce a very stellar part of the Pakistan tech startup system. Someone who's been involved in it for more than 25 years. And he is the chairman, co-founder and CEO of NetSol Technologies. Interestingly, one of the first Pakistani companies to be listed on the Nasdaq exchange. And with that, I'd like to welcome Mr. Najib Ghori. Assalamu alaikum, sir. How are you? Walaikum salam. I'm fine. And thank you so much for inviting me to your Tech Check episode. And I'm really excited to be here today. Well, we're very excited to have you because as you well know, you've been around since before we even knew how to spell tech. <laughs> kind of. I'm still not that old, but I'm there. <laughs> You're I'm right. not alluding to your age, trust me. <laughs> no, I've been around for a while, that's for sure. Dot-com time, yes, before that, actually. <laughs> Absolutely, and that's what I think is really important. So with that, uh, Najib, can you please maybe shed a little light on yourself and the background and what NetSol is doing today? Yes. Um, my journey started about 40 years ago for, from Pakistan to U.S. I did my college MBA, then I did a corporate career in the Unilever, then moved to uh, an oil company. And from oil company, I pivoted to an IT company when I had no clue back in the late 90s, like 96, 97. And I was lucky, to be honest with you, that I partnered with my family, my three amazing brothers, Salim, Naim, and Shahab. And uh, the values that I got from my father, my late father, who just passed away a few months ago, we learned that success comes from sharing uh, with people that you really care most and you can bring the value uh, collectively because I thought back then an opportunity came out of nowhere uh, from a, a stable corporate career. But uh, at the time, I was just working for myself my two young children and, of course, my lovely wife in L.A. And I realized that there's got to be a bigger purpose in life than just feeding yourself and not be able to contribute um, in the society in some fashion. Sure. Being from Pakistan, I have been um, very attached to my home country, like you and many others of my friends uh, who live in L.A. and the U.S. And I thought, you know... Um, Something exciting was happening back in the mid-90s around the Y2K and the dot-com boom, you know. So we partnered with my brother and we founded. My brother had already started the company in Pakistan, Salim and Naim, and I brought in some investment from the U.S. So we got together to really create a, an ecosystem, a landscape that would create a company which would be the first Pakistani uh, U.S. company to be listed. And listing was just an amazing experience on its own right, you know. The technology was really back on my, in my mind. It was something that was, we became a pioneer company in Lahore, Pakistan. And so we started working together and uh, we created a niche product, enterprise software solution to cater to leasing and finance industry worldwide. It's a very big market, but it's a very niche segment. Not a lot of companies are doing what we've been doing. But then for many years, Farouk, it did very well, uh, brought a lot of new customers, over 1,500 bright young programmers, developers. They grew with us, you know, back then. And so we managed this transition from a enterprise legacy. Nestle is now in the, into big time mobility. And as you know, mobility is pretty much the global phenomena and how markets and trends have shifted so dramatically in our less than 10 years maybe. So we are basically from enterprise software company from license model. Nestle is now a global player in many countries with 300 plus nice customers. And more importantly, our biggest strength is our people, without a doubt. And technology company, as you know, is to do with the, the, the intelligent people we have uh, in any company. So we believe our biggest reason for success why we're today is our People, very smart, 
young, trained, fresh, and on many, many years. Nestle is overall in our company, which is now to mobility, SaaS, cloud, and so forth. So we are really excited where we are today. I think the future is very bright. And I'll talk to you about uh, my strength in Pakistan, which my in, 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 a, in a minute. But I think Nestle is a rightly positioned to now make strong uh, presence in the U.S. market, strong in Asia Pacific and Europe. China has been a very strong market for us for many, many years, kind of de facto leader. But I credit all this success to my people back in Lahore, especially and then all our other offices. Fantastic. No, that's great to hear, Najib. And whether, uh, and I'm sure you're aware of this, but Nepsol is a name that's kind of been on the tips of people's tongues in Pakistan for multiple decades now. So you guys are definitely pioneers, well-known, kind of set that forward vision in terms of what's happening in Pakistan from a tech perspective. One of the questions I had, Najib, and you've Obviously, you know, and, and the beauty of it is you have the rear view mirror experience. You've seen so many changes in government and economic environments. What's your view on what's happening in the tech startup ecosystem right now? You know, over the last couple of years, we've seen tremendous growth. We're seeing lots of money coming in. The quantum of money for a country like Pakistan, very, very large. Yeah. What are the thoughts? What, 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 what do you think is happening and what's your view going forward on this? First, um, you hit the nail on the head, quite frankly. And uh, I've been also getting active in the U.S. side, uh, attending a lot of uh, conferences and uh, meeting with a lot of startups. We also have, Nestle has also a, a small incubator in our company within Nestle. It's called Inspire. And I go to universities, particularly Nest, a lot. Um, mm -hmm. And I visit youngsters who are, they have one of the biggest incubator centers in Nest on campus. And I mm. see the talent. I see the talent of the students, uh, whether they're uh, undergraduate or master's or even PhDs. And I see talent in my own company. And then, of course, around the whole ecosystem. I believe something really is happening in Pakistan. And I think I'll give you a few reasons why I feel sure. that way. Number one is, I think, uh, the new millennial, including my two sons who are in that age group, right, um, are coming back to Pakistan from Ivy League universities, uh, Europe, uh, U.S., and mostly from Pakistan, whether they are in Nels, Ghulam Isaac, Fars, Lund, you name it. And these youngsters are way ahead. When we started our company, we were still learning, old-fashioned way, right? But these youngsters have the understanding how the digitization is happening, the mobility, of how fast this thing is going, and they pick up, they've learned things fast, much faster than people like us, simply because they have that knack. They understand where the technology is going, and I think the startup scene, I've seen some of them in Silicon Valley, with the help of Open, I participated in a couple of them. And I was really inspired to see the youngsters with the brilliant ideas they have. I mean, they're creating new apps. In my company, we're doing something so phenomenal. Youngsters in 20s or early 30s with their education, with their... And, you know, in Pakistan, there are millions of freelancers, right? They have the knowledge, they have the drive to be entrepreneurs, and then they want to go start abroad because naturally they need to be funded, right? All ideas may not be the best, but some ideas are really good coming from Pakistan. And I think with this uh, government, very progressive, I believe, mm -hmm. they are creating opportunities in many, many fronts, whether it's smart city, investing in infrastructure, universities, and just opening doors for investor VCs to come to Pakistan and look at these startups because they are the game changer. I've been to a lot of countries and different places. I see that Pakistani youngsters are now going to be in the front line of their energy, their knowledge, and their excitement, what they can do, not just for themselves, but for Pakistan. So it's just happening. It's, uh, it's, I get fired up, to be honest with you. When I talk to these youngsters and my own youngsters, my own company, it just, it's, and it's really inspirational to see where this thing is going. And sky is the limit, my friend, with these youngsters. 
65% of the population is, you know who they are. Mm. And they're hungry. They're hungry to do these things because by nature, Pakistanis are more enterprising. Sure. Even from our days, like right, they're enterprising, they take risks. That's a good thing because that's how the economy can thrive and grow in many directions. No doubt. Well, and again, you and your brothers and Netsol are a testament to that, you know, starting from a small outsourcing offshoring operation to becoming an enterprise software player moving fast into the SaaS world. And I, I know what you guys are doing in the asset management and the leasing space. So kudos to you and, and your company. And the one thing I did want to call out also, Najib, is one thing I've seen is you're a, you, you've never forgotten who you are, what you are, or where you're from. And I, I thank you personally, because that's something uh, we need to really acknowledge. Right? Uh, we, we as Pakistanis have a ton of challenges in our local economy and in our environment and our government and so on and so forth. But, you know, the, the, the positivity that you continue to resonate has really even helped me. It's inspired me partially in, in terms of tech check. So I wanted to thank you as uh, a fellow Pakistani and someone who's trying to do the same thing you're doing. You know, because, uh, Farouk, it's really, what we're doing is we're seeing the real youth population. And um, it is incumbent on someone like me or you. What you're doing is actually remarkable. You bring people together and share the story, hear your story, and people get inspired right Every one of them have some story to share, right? Because Pakistan, we will never forget uh, where we came from. Because if you if you forget where your roots are, then I think you're not fair with your home country. And sure. diaspora in the U.S. or U.K. anywhere else plays a big part Absolutely. to bring not just the money part, but to bring the opportunity, the talent, the employment opportunities, bring ideas to Pakistan and invest in Pakistan your own money, put your skin in the game, bring investors, show them that Pakistan is a, a good place to do business because we have, in 25 years, seen a lot of things, lots of ups and downs, as any company would, uh, especially an IT, global company, you know, public company, and dependency on 100% export business. We do software in Lahore, but we, but we export to all over the world. We don't have local revenue. That is a challenging because when you go through all kind of uh, macro challenges, and geopolitical challenges, but we're still hung in there. Why? Because we believe that these youngsters need people like us to inspire them and give them opportunity. And I think it is our responsibility to bring the knowledge, the education, and the capabilities to help build this economy. The future of Pakistan is education, and of course, education means technologies, many different um, areas of opportunity you have. And in all credit to the government, I think uh, the leaders are in the right track. I believe they they want to see the technology boom like your neighbors. And I'm mm -hmm. telling you one thing, part of my friend, I would never underestimate the potential caliber of our people. They are second to none. Absolutely, there's no question about it. Because we have proven, and there are many other companies, our colleagues, our friends in Pakistan, who have used these talents, come from sometimes rural part of the population, but they get education degrees, and then you put them to work, and they'll create wonder for you. And this is what Nestle and many other companies have earned respect in the global Western market. Imagine if a company like Nestle is supporting Daimler Benz, BMW, where they're very complex solution. This is coming from Pakistan. This is the way our people are, what they're doing. So I'm really excited with the opportunities of Pakistan because of the startup and the technology boom. This is just starting to happen. And it's happening right now. Yeah, and this is this is a fantastic part. And it, it's kind of going to lead me to our, our last question for the day, Najib. And that is, you know, given where you are and the story, you know, the, the, the whole, the 20 plus year journey that you've been on, what is some advice for particularly the young companies in Pakistan who are aspiring to build and grow outside of Pakistan? What are some areas of focus that you would recommend? I believe, keep in mind, my youngster fellows, that opportunity is huge. I mean, it's... Uh, 
I call it infinite opportunity. Okay, keep one thing in mind. Never get bogged down with the hurdles and obstacles. Because we went through many of them. <laughs> I'm still around. That's part of a, a young company. It's a growing pain. You go through that. But if you believe in a in a a vision, right? And you say, okay, I can do something unique that will not only help my family, but it'll create opportunity for others. And if you do that, I think your ideas may be not the best idea, but keep at it. And never shy of failing because failure is not a bad thing. It actually makes you a better person because you don't repeat the same mistake. You learn from those mistakes. I have made a lot of mistakes. Mm-hmm. And it's part of growing and building a company. I think you look at the opportunity, you look at the ecosystem, you look at the landscape, you look at the new things happening that the youngsters want. I mean, digital platform is just a huge thing. India has done very well, and Pakistan is catching up. And all the new things, the new tools, I believe it is theirs to adopt, embrace, and build something new. And I'm telling you something I heard. Clan Perkins is invested in Pakistan. That is huge. Mm. Really huge. I mean, I, once I heard Klein Bergen in a forum to, uh, 10 years ago in San Francisco, the partner was speaking to a large audience and he said his biggest mistake was he ignored Steve Jobs to invest in his company. He said that was his biggest regret. I'm telling you, there could be many Steve Jobs from Pakistan. There's opportunity, entrepreneurs, technology, knowledge, and they understand that they have believe in what they're doing. So never shy away from exploring investing locally and from outside. So future is great and I'm really excited about the youngster. They will carry the torch and take this Pakistan into a map which I think we'll be very proud um, uh, to see them in front of us. So I'm excited. There's opportunity. Let's run with it. Fantastic, Najib. Well, Najib, as you know, we try to keep Tech Shack pretty concise. Uh, As you know, we've come to the TikTok culture. So we want to make sure people watch the video. And sure. today we've come to the end of our time. First of all, uh, honored to have you on the show. Thank you very much for giving us some of your valuable time and insights on the country. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Have a good day. And with that, to our audience, as you can see, we continue to bring you unique stories from across the Pakistan ecosystem, from Pakistan itself, unique players like Mr. Ghori and that's all, and all of the startups we've covered to date. Really need your help. Keep liking, sharing, subscribing to our platforms, and please keep giving us new candidates. That's what really helps. We want to keep this thing going. Our plan is to hit 100 episodes by fall of this year. Let's hope you can be part of that and help us get there. And with that, I say, Allah Hafiz.